Donald Trump released a disturbing video to his True Social account that desperately attempts to convince his followers that they shouldn't listen to what everyone says. They're not in the cult. Everyone else is in the cult, and they're going to try to brainwash you to be in the cult. Get ready. One of the criticisms of the MAGA movement, and just up front, I want to be very clear, we're referring to hardcore supporters of Donald Trump, not all Republicans, not even all people who voted for Trump, the MAGA ride or die folks. And people point out correctly that this population exemplifies many of the characteristics of a cult, the attachment to one man and his personality, the blind belief in his every word, the belittling of any widely accepted as credible source, the narrative that everyone else in the world is lying and Trump is the one person telling the truth and on and on it goes. Well, Donald Trump doesn't want his followers to feel insecure about this criticism. So as every good cult leader does, he says, hmm, so you're concerned you might be in a cult, which I don't even think they are concerned with that. But if you are, no, it's Hillary Clinton and the Democrats who are going to try to brainwash you to be in a cult. That's what he tries to do in the video that you're about to watch. Take a look. With Trump taking a commanding lead and Bidenomics hurting American families, genius Hillary Clinton has come up with a way for Biden to win. There needs to be a formal deprogramming of the cult members. Formal deprogramming of the cult members. Deprogramming of the cult members. A brilliant plan. And here's what that would look like. Pay attention. Joe Biden will defeat him. Biden has done an amazing job, an amazing, amazing job. But there's one small problem. The basket of deplorables. Deplorables, deplorables, deplorables. Working Americans aren't idiots. And they know who's on their side. To American workers watching their take-home pay shrink and watching inflation destroy their family and their lives, to all of you, I have your back. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Yikes. Now, because it's at the center point of the video, I will get back to that clip of Hillary Clinton in a little bit. We have so much, by the way, to go through on this. I'll show you a clip later of someone I think you would fully consider in the cult, and we'll use that as a reference. And, and this is exciting, towards the end, I'll show you a sneak peek clip of episode two of Mocha's with MAGA, where I interviewed a MAGA congressional candidate, Matthew Lucci. But first, let me address this idea that Donald Trump is some fighter for the working class, as was promoted at the end of that video. No matter how many times he disingenuously uses pro-working class language, that doesn't cover up his record. Let's compare Trump and Biden. Trump took over what was widely regarded as a solid economy, still lots of issues, but was growing and all the expectations were that it would continue to. And what happened? It continued to. Now, this is before COVID. We'll get back to his record on COVID. By some metrics, it even slowed a bit. For example, job growth was faster the last three years of Obama than the first three years of Trump, as NBC writes. But the real story of the Trump economy and the president's role in building it is not so simple. If you compare key economic indicators from Barack Obama's second term in office to the first three years of Trump's time, that is before the pandemic hit, the data show a continuation of trends, not a dramatic shift. It suggests Trump didn't build something new. Rather, he inherited a pretty good situation. I mentioned jobs as an example. 215,000 average monthly jobs for the end of Obama, then 182,000 for the beginning of Trump. Again, we're taking three years, three years, so we can exclude Trump's COVID record. We'll get back to it. Unemployment fell 3.3 percentage points during the same time under Obama, while only 1.2 percentage points under Trump. GDP growth was essentially the same. Now, to be fair, the stock market did do really well under Trump, which isn't super surprising when the top 10% earners own 70% of the stock market and Trump had very pro 10% policies. Doesn't mean we don't want the stock market to do well. We do. It's just not the best indicator of the overall stability and health of the economy. So, Yes, the analogy that friend of the show and contributor on the website Josiah has made, if someone builds 30 stories of a building and then you come along and add a few on top, you can't really take credit for the entire building. Obama, since right now we're comparing three years, three years, took over a Bush era recession, then left office with a good economy. We'll get to how Trump compares to Biden in just a moment. 
So the question is always, how did a president do within the context of the situation they were in? And Trump used his presidency as an opportunity to do what? Well, his one big legislative victory was to cut taxes that disproportionately benefited the top of our economic ladder, making his rich friends even richer. He failed the working class. He could have capitalized on a good economic time to really fight for the rights of workers and make sure they're benefiting as much as they could and should from those good economic metrics. And then we can't leave off of his record, as a lot of people try to do for some reason, the fact that he selfishly mismanaged the COVID pandemic. He admitted, you might remember, to Bob Woodward to downplaying the threat of the pandemic, thus not responding urgently enough because he thought it would hurt him politically. He cast doubt on medical professionals, encouraged his followers to not take it seriously, and people died because of it. After the vaccine rollout, Republicans died at a much higher rate than Democrats did. Some of that having to do with a lot of it having to do with the science skepticism. Trump contributed to that. Not to mention, we likely experienced a worse economic downturn than we would have otherwise because of his horrible response. So now let's compare that to the record of Biden thus far. Biden took over an economic catastrophe, a massive economic downturn. That's what he took over with. And that's the context, not a solid economy like Trump, who went on to fail when it mattered, which hurt the working class. But instead, a bad situation is what Biden took over with then. And Biden then oversaw nearly 14 million jobs being added to the economy. If you're going to brag about the little eke down under Trump that caused unemployment to hit a historic low, then how dang impressive is it to you to see a massive drop in unemployment after a crisis? that then got back down to historic lows. The United States recovered faster than other comparable economies in the world, meaning even though the president, of course, only has a certain amount of power to affect the economy, if anything, Biden's and Democrats' approach assisted in creating a situation where our recovery would outpace other G7 countries. And while inflation has been brutal, it's an obvious aftermath of the recovery efforts under Trump and Biden to a once in a lifetime economic downturn that took place, I might add, before Biden was president. And of course, this is the case. Any president would have dealt with it. The way I know that is other industrialized economies we compare ourselves to experience the exact same thing. And actually, if you look at us compared to those other G7 countries, we have the lowest inflation in that 3% range as of now. So a better than expected and super impressive economic recovery after taking over an economic disaster, massive job growth, real wages increasing, unemployment plummeting. Meanwhile, Biden and Democrats oversee, while that's going on, they oversee a remarkable list of legislative victories. The infrastructure law, which invests in projects that will help everyday Americans. The Inflation Reduction Act that lowers prescription drug costs for seniors and the largest investment in green energy that will create millions of jobs. The American Rescue Plan providing necessary COVID relief in a brutal time that contributed to that strong recovery, just to name a few. Not to mention Biden's National Labor Relations Board, so important, needs to be discussed more, as the American prospect put it, brought workers' rights back from the dead. Whoa! And Biden is now widely regarded as one of the most pro-labor presidents in American history. Again, his NLRB is crushing it, changing the game for workers. So yeah, you don't need to be brainwashed by videos of Hillary Clinton to understand why the Biden Democratic agenda is far superior to that of Trump. And don't let people lie and act like we can't take into consideration the context. Thinking Trump was better for the economy because before horribly mismanaging a pandemic, he didn't mess up what Obama handed to him. It's a low bar. And then refusing to give Biden credit because there are some obvious economic aftermaths of a once in a lifetime economic downturn is entirely dishonest. Okay, a lot more to go through. <laughs> that part took longer than I expected but it's important to go through the facts. Now to the Hillary Clinton clip. As I previously said when we covered it originally, I do think the wording could have been better. Coming from Hillary Clinton, who is at the center of all these right-wing conspiracy theories, that is of course going to make the heads of right-wingers explode the term formal <laughs> deprogramming. But we talked about deprogramming just within communities, people who love one another, trying to empathetically and compassionately assist in someone's deprogramming of themselves. And the faux outrage about Hillary Clinton suggesting that many of Trump's followers are in a cult, I'll refute that <laughs> with a few moments from a conversation that I've shown in full in a past video of a Trump supporter in Anaheim, California. That was the one where we got threatened a bunch of times who had this to say. By the president, you mean... Trump. Okay. Yeah, he's still the president. Like right now, he's the president? Yeah. Isn't he running for president, though? No, no, no. He's the president. He turned power over to the military a while ago. You don't know? You don't no, know. I don't know that. Yeah. That the, he handed, that he uh, turned power over to the military before he left office. But then when Biden was inaugurated, whenever he pulled out of Afghanistan, things like that, how was he doing that if he wasn't actually president? 
He he did. It has nothing to do with uh, President with uh, Biden at all. No. He's just not doing anything. No, he's not doing the videos anything. of him speaking, alive, bro. He's not alive. No, he's not alive. Whoa! No. <laughs> you dropped him off. Okay, so explain that to me. Then who's this guy that we keep seeing speaking and stuff? Those are those are uh, uh, what they call uh, doubles. So listen, no one's going to be sent to a formal deprogramming location, as people have been saying. Come on. But yeah, if that guy ever wanted to not believe all that garbage, he would need to do some serious work on it. Loved ones around him would have to seriously work to help him deprogram himself. And I know it feels to people sometimes like I'm soloing out the crazies when I show clips like that, but a majority of the Republican Party believes the election was stolen. So of course, that guy doesn't represent a majority of the Republican Party's views with the Biden's an actor and Trump's actually in control of the military. But still, a very detached from reality belief is held by so many people. A majority of the GOP's electorate believes nonsense because Trump repeated it enough times and his allies and all these different people elsewhere did as well. It's disturbing. So while sure you can get all upset about Hillary Clinton pointing those facts out, even if not in the best wording, it is a real concern and that's serious and something we should talk about. I've talked to more Trump supporters, probably even the most Republican politicians. I've now gone to so many events on the ground and on and off camera, we'll talk. Sometimes after the interview, people will stand there and we'll talk for like 10 minutes as I just try desperately to reach them and usually fail. And in all of those conversations, as I accumulate more of them and get more of that experience, I've only become more avid about the belief that for many of the supporters, it is a cult. It doesn't mean we dehumanize anyone. It doesn't mean we don't want to also fight for them to have health care, but it's just acknowledging a fact. And let me now use a less severe example. If you feel like, oh, you're straw manning them by using a guy who's saying that Trump is in control of the military, or whatever. I referenced the election being stolen. Let's do a different example. The Republican Party has proclaimed to be the most for the Constitution Party for as long as I can remember. And now in the name of loyalty to Donald Trump, many are willing to shred it, just give up on it. Here's Mitt Romney, by the way, calling this out. I, I don't think I've heard a single member of my uh, caucus, the Republicans in the Senate, say, you know, Donald Trump is great. Aren't we lucky to have him as our leader? Donald Trump represents a failure of character, which is changing, I think, in many respects, the psyche of our nation and the heart of our nation. And that's something which takes a long time, if ever, uh, to repair. He's saying a very large portion of my party really doesn't believe in the Constitution. How did you come to that damning conclusion? When former President Trump said we should set aside the Constitution and reappoint him as president, why, you had Republicans cheer that. It's like, wait a second. This is the leader of our party saying we should put aside the Constitution. How can you believe you're following the Constitution if that's the case? I do get death threats. Mm -hmm. um, and her feeling was I would not be safe and I shouldn't go. And I said, well, th this is a constitutional moment. This is a time when I have to be there. And he's exactly right. If you don't believe me or Mitt Romney, take it from Donald Trump himself, who said it on True Social. And actually, instead of me reading it once again, I have a clip to play for you where I read Trump's call for the termination of the Constitution to a MAGA congressional candidate, Matthew Lucci. This is a sneak peek of episode two of Mocha's with MAGA, which is coming soon. A lot's been going on, so we've been sort of behind, but I'll give you a specific date very soon. And watch how he attempts to explain away what Trump had to say. Trump's cult is scary enough that even people like Matthew Lucci, who I don't think believes his explanation makes any sense that you'll hear, but knows the hardcore followers of Donald Trump don't want to hear that Trump calling for the termination of the Constitution indeed means he's not for the Constitution. Here is a preview of my conversation with Matthew Lucci, who is running for Congress in Texas. So with the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception and working closely with big tech companies, the DNC and the Democratic Party, I'll slow down for the notable part, but do you throw the presidential election results uh, of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner or do you have a new election? And here we go. A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Terminate the Constitution. All the rules, articles. How on earth, as a constitutional conservative, as many Republicans proclaim to be, would that be something that's appropriate? I don't think that's appropriate. Um, but I do think that he was expressing his opinion and his exasperations over voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election and was testing a legal theory uh, about whether if no one else is following the Constitution, why do we have to? Uh, and I think that's unfortunately what 
our, our country has gotten to is one side doesn't follow the Constitution, so the other side doesn't think they, they have to who, either. Who, I mean, there it is. If a movement can be so loyal to one man that people trying to win over that movement, such as Matthew Lucci, have to bend themselves into logical pretzels, we're in a tough spot. Calling for the termination of the Constitution doesn't mean anything other than Trump is not for the Constitution. And using his lies about the election to justify calling for that doesn't make it any better. Hey, before you go, don't forget to become a member at LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership to get access to a daily bonus show, an entire bonus show Monday through Friday. Plus, follow me on threads at Luke Beasley Official Instagram at Luke Beasley Official Twitter or X at Luke P. Beasley and sign up for the Beasley Brief, a daily morning newsletter summarizing the previous day's events by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash brief. And I'll see you all in the next video.